AQA, A-level physics, astrophysics, advantages of large telescopes. So this is the, the last video about telescopes in the astrophysics topic. Uh, this is the bit of the specification that we're going to be looking at. If you want to have a read of that, let's get cracking. So resolving power. Resolving power, I mentioned this in the last video, it's your ability to tell two points of light apart. For example, stars. Uh, here's a two NASA images. The first one is a, a ground-based telescope. Uh, and the second one is the Hubble telescope. On the first image, you can only see one blob. On the second one, there's clearly two stars there. We can resolve between them. OK, so the Hubble Space Telescope has got better resolving power. So poor resolving power, we only see one point of light. Good resolving power, we can tell them apart. We can resolve between them. Now, resolving power is an angle, and it's usually in radians. If you have to do a calculation, make sure you know radians. Uh, resolving power, it's the smallest angle between two points that we can resolve between, okay? Uh, and we call it the angular resolution. So if we're talking about the resolving power of a telescope, the smaller the angle, the better, okay? So the resolving power is an angle and the smaller, the better. Here's a little uh, question for you to have a go at. A human eye has a resolving power of about three times 10 to the minus four radians. Uh, two people on a mountain five kilometers away, one meter apart, shine a torch at you. Will you see two points of light or will you only see one point of light? So pause the video and have a go at it. So what we'll do is we'll work out the angle and you know that the angle in radians is the arc over the radius. So the angle in radians is one over 5,000, which is two times 10 to the minus four. And as that is less than the resolving power, uh, you won't be able to tell between the two points of light. Now, what does the resolving power depend on? I mentioned this in the last video, and it's called the Rayleigh criterion, uh, that theta, the resolving power theta is approximately equal to lambda over d. Now, I'm not going to get into single slit diffraction patterns through circular apertures and airy disks and stuff like that. Don't need to know that. You just need to know the Rayleigh criterion theta is about lambda over d. Lambda is the wavelength of the radiation. D is the diameter of the aperture. For example, here's a question. I've seen loads of questions on past papers like this. A radio telescope has a diameter of 25 meters. It is used to observe waves from a galaxy of wavelength five meters. Calculate its resolving power at this wavelength. Have a go yourself. The answer is three, two, one. And it's about 0.2 radians. Uh, just a note that the James Webb Telescope has an angular resolution of about five times 10 to the minus seven radians, uh, depending on its wavelength. It's got a fantastic resolution. Collecting power. I think I mentioned this in the last video. Look at these three telescopes. Look at the diameter of the aperture. Now, obviously, the bigger the aperture, the more light they will collect. And the amount of light that they collect will be proportional to the diameter squared because it will be proportional to the area, which is pi r squared. So very easy. How many times more light will the second and third telescopes collect compared to the first one? And work it out for yourself. And the answer is that. Now, uh, lastly, last slide, comparing the eye with a CCD. A CCD, you should know from GCSE, a charged coupled device. 
This is if you're in astronomy on a lot of telescopes now, it's like having a digital camera at the eyepiece. So the image is formed on the CCD and that can go straight to a computer and be recorded and be enhanced and be manipulated and whatever. So you can just look through the eyepiece and see stuff or there are advantages to having a CCD there. Now, is a CCD better than a human eye? Well, there's a few comparisons we need to do. One of them is called quantum efficiency. You've got photons landing on your retina. You've got photons landing on the CCD. Uh, what percentage of these photons actually do something? You know, it's the photoelectric effect. How many of them liberate an electron? And look at these figures for a CCD. It's about 80 percent. Uh, for a human eye, it's about 5 percent. So the quantum efficiency of a CCD is much better than for a human eye. Learn those numbers. CCD 80 percent, human eye 5 percent. Learn what quantum efficiency means. Resolution. Now we know now that there's lots of different factors that affect resolution. It depends on the telescope that you're using. For your eye, it will depend on the size of your pupil. OK, now uh, one thing it will depend on as well is the distance between the sensors. Uh, they make up the pixels when you form the image. The sensors on the CD, on a CCD typically between 10 and 20 micrometers apart, the linear distance between them. Now, on your retina, you have cones and rods. The sensors are called cones and rods, and they're typically about three micrometers apart, although it does vary. You know, it's not a biology lesson, but they're the most sensitive in the middle at the fovea uh, and then the kind, at least for color, for your cones. And then the rods are more sensitive around the outside. It depends also on light intensity. Uh, when it's dark, the cones, the color, don't work very well, and, but the rods do. So in, in the dark, you tend to see black and white. Basically, there's lots of different things which affect resolution. One of them is the distance between the actual sensors, and you'll see that they are actually closer together on the retina. Uh, ease of use, well, eyes are very portable. Uh, I usually carry a couple around with me all of the time. Um, they can adapt to low light intensities. You get your night vision after about 20 minutes. Uh, the size of the pupil gets bigger in the dark. Okay. Uh, one big advantage of CCDs is that if you link it to a computer, you can build up an image over time. If you're looking at a faraway galaxy or something, you can get the telescope to move as the Earth rotates so that it's looking at the galaxy for an hour. Uh, and then the image builds up. You collect more and more and more light. So like a time lapse thing uh, and you build up a good image, whereas the eye only sees in real time. It only gives you the instant of what you can see. So there are advantages and disadvantages of a CCD compared to the eye.